I can see these little fur particles everywhere. And I've probably lint rolled myself like 15 times by now, just so I don't look like a total mess for you guys. Welcome to Sewing Anastasia. And today we are gonna make a super fun winter jacket from scratch. I designed a pattern and we are gonna sew it up. The pattern I designed has a dolman sleeve, so it's super comfortable to wear and it's super easy to make. And it's got this super awesome huge collar on it to keep that wind off your neck. We're gonna sew this up today with a full lining, but you can create it with or without. I sewed up my sample out of this neon yellow and pink quilted fabric, which I am just in love with. And I know it's picking up the lights on this camera really crazy, but how cool is this fabric? I could not resist sewing it up. Today, I'm going to be using this red shag fur to sew up the jacket. And then for the lining, we are using these adorable sparkle hearts, and we're going to put these giant bread buttons on it. Even if you're not sewing up this jacket with me right now, you're gonna learn a lot of tips for working with faux fur and how to put a lining in a jacket. You can get this pattern at sewingastasia.com and download it. And this pattern comes in sizes extra small through 6X. Next, you need to measure your bust. So measure the fullest part of your bust, so that way you can find what size you are on the size chart. Now find your bust measurement in the size chart and make sure you pick a size that is that size or bigger. It's a jacket, so you can always go a little bigger. Now that you know what size to cut out, let's cut out that paper pattern with our paper scissors, of course. You should have six pattern pieces cut out if you're creating the jacket with the full lining. Now we're all cut out. So you're cutting out your pattern, you probably noticed this little note on the pattern, and it says that if you are following the grain line, you're gonna have to add that half inch here because this pattern is so wide. But if you're cutting on the cross grain, then you can cut the back pattern on fold. So you just need to be aware of how wide your fabric is and what direction you are laying your pattern on the fabric. I'm cutting my jacket out on the grain today because my fur is directional. So I added this extra half inch. So I will have a seam up my center back. On the patterns, you're going to find these little notch marks. You wanna cut those out with your notcher. And if you don't have a notcher, you can use scissors. So we're just gonna clip out right where that little spot is. Now clip out all the notches on your pattern. Now it's time to cut out our fake fur. And the first thing we need to do is figure out which direction is the fur going. If I hold it like this, it's going the wrong direction. It's kind of popping out. But if I take it and I flip it over, you can see that it's hanging nice and down. So this fur has a direction to it. So we need to make sure that we are paying attention to that when we lay our pattern pieces out. So we're going to cut out our fur, unfortunately, one piece at a time because you don't wanna cut through all of the layers. You don't wanna cut into the pile, otherwise you ruin it and you end up with a giant mess. So we're gonna carefully just cut through the back layer of the fur. So I'm gonna cut my front pattern piece out first. This one is cut four, but we gotta do one at a time. So we're gonna weight it down so it does not move on us. Make sure it's nice and flat. We're gonna take our scissors and we are just gonna clip through that very top layer. We don't wanna go cutting through all of the fur, otherwise it might not end up even and hang nice in certain spots. So we're just gonna work our way right through that little backing that holds the fur together. And then you can see how we still have that fur hanging down from the bottom. We didn't just chop all of that off. When you come up to any of your notches, make sure you chalk your notches really well. There we go. And that is how you are going to cut out your fake fur. And then you're gonna end up with a beautiful piece that is cut out of your fake fur. And if you're not cutting out fake fur, you can just use your rotary cutter to cut out your pieces. I got everything cut out. My hand is sore from using the scissors going through all of that fur. And I had to do some vacuum because I've got fuzzy bits everywhere here in the studio. But I'm ready to sew now. If you had to put a seam up center back, the first thing you're gonna sew together is your center back panel. When you're sewing fake fur, you wanna make sure that you tuck all the fur to the inside could be a little tedious to work with at first. So tuck in all of the fur and then go ahead and either clip or pin. I like to use big quilting pins when I'm doing this. 
So just work your way along that center back seam if you have it and pin it together. And just make sure you're tucking in the fur as you go. So you really want the fur to look tucked in and not be hanging out. Also, when you're sewing really thick fabrics, you wanna make sure you're using a walking foot, which you can buy for just about any sewing machine, or your machine might have a dual feed built into it. My machine has one in back here, so we're gonna pull that down and engage it. And if your sewing machine doesn't have a selection for fabric type, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you make your stitch length longer when working with thick fabrics. When you get to the top edge, back stitch and cut. And with the fake fur, you can't even tell that we have a seam here. Now we're gonna sew the side front and the center front panels together. And wow, is this stuff getting fuzzy and furry in my nose. And if this was being manufactured, they would totally be wearing masks and you might see me put on a mask soon to keep all these fuzzies out of my nose. Take note that the side piece is longer than center front and that's how it's supposed to be. We're just gonna line them up at the shoulder and sew down. I'm gonna start at the top shoulder and just work my way all the way down. And now do the exact same thing to the other side. Now that we have the main pieces of the back and the front sewn together, we're going to place them on top of each other, right sides together, and then we are going to sew them up. So we are going to end up sewing up the arms, side seams, and the underarm. So we're going to be going from the bottom of the sleeve all the way up to the shoulder. We're gonna do the shoulder and the top of the sleeve on the other one. We're gonna make sure we leave center front open and then we're gonna sew from the bottom of the hem of the jacket all the way down the sleeve on both sides. And then essentially we will have the shell of the outside of the jacket. And the seam allowance on this is a half inch. And don't forget to line up your notches while you're sewing. I also want to mention that I have my needle down button engaged so that way every time I stop to position the fur to the inside, I don't lose my position in my stitch. Back stitch at the end and cut. Now we have one sleeve done. Now just sew up the other side the exact same way. And at this point, you should have the shell of the jacket all sewn up. It's a great time to try it on and see how it's looking. It's time to sew the collar together. We're gonna place them right sides together. We're gonna sew together this big outer curve, half inch seam allowance, and then we're gonna sew the two short sides. Just make sure you leave open that inner curve. Okay, let's put this collar together. Back stitch and cut, and let's check out our collar. So we're gonna take it and we are going to flip it right side out and we should have a big shaggy red fur collar and check out all that fuzz everywhere. Ooh, it's gonna look great. If you're sewing fake fur, I suggest not top stitching around the areas we just sewed. But if you are doing like a quilted fabric or a denim or I don't know, any other type of fabric, I highly suggest top stitching the edges together that you just sewed. So that way it's gonna keep it nice and crisp. But if I try and top stitch this fur, it's gonna create the stitching line here. It's gonna hold the fur in place. It might look a little funny. So we are not going to be top stitching this collar right now because it's fake fur. But other fabric, yes. So now we're gonna take the collar and we're gonna place it right sides together with the jacket. And you wanna make sure that you stay a half inch away from center front because we have seam allowance here to sew our facing on. Now we're gonna sew these three layers together right around the neck. So we have the collar of the jacket and we have the two layers of the collar, just making sure that we stay a half inch away from center front on both ends. And this fur is driving me crazy. Now very carefully, we are going to sew all three of these layers together through this thick fur. And I'm probably gonna eat some of it in the process. And you get to the end, back stitch and cut. We finally made it through all of those layers. 
And while you're sewing your fake fur, if the foot gets caught on the fake fur when you go over the seam, just backstitch, stop, cut, pull it out, and start again. Next, I'm going to be starting my lining, and if you're not adding a lining, you can skip ahead. Now we're moving on to that lining. So you're gonna notice that the pattern pieces for the lining look a lot like the outside self pieces, and that's because they are very similar. So the center back panel is cut too because there's extra fabric back here at the neck, so we're gonna have a pleat back there for movement. But the first step is just sewing up center back at a half inch, and the front of the lining is the same as the outside of the jacket where we have that princess line there. We're gonna attach side front to the front. So go ahead and sew up those seams. Don't forget your seam allowance is a half inch. So now you should have one big piece for your back. Should look something like that. Now we're gonna do those front panels. To prep these pieces, we need to do some marking. We're gonna mark one inch up from the bottom on the outside fur piece. Should look like that. Now we're gonna chalk one inch on the right side of the lining and then we are going to iron it up towards the inside one inch. So just mark this all the way across your entire lining bottom. And then we're gonna head over to the iron and iron this under the one inch. Now when we pin this together, we're gonna pin the one inch fold spot with the one inch chalk mark on the fur. So basically what's gonna happen is our lining is going to be starting one inch up plus a one inch fold in the lining. I'm starting at the top of the shoulder. I have everything nice and lined up and pinned and let's sew it together. And then you would do the exact same thing to the other side. And now it should look something like that. Now that we have the front lining sewn to the front facing here with the fur, we need to do a nice top stitch on the seam so that way it stays nice and flat when we're wearing it. So when you're doing this, just make sure that you have the seam allowance towards the lining piece when you're sewing so that way you're catching the seam allowance under there and it's gonna make it nice and durable and crisp. Now let's add our top stitch. It is looking great. Now do the same thing on the other side. Now we're placing our linings on top of each other. Front lining on top of the back lining. And now we're gonna sew from the hem all the way down to the bottom of the sleeve. And we're going to sew from the bottom of the sleeve all the way up to the shoulder. But on one side, you need to leave about a six inch opening on the top shoulder because that is how we are going to flip our jacket right side out later. So let's go sew those sides together. I'm gonna leave an opening here. So I'm gonna leave my needle in, turn my project, and come off of the fabric, backstitch, and cut. I'm gonna leave this opening about six to eight inches big because we got a big furry coat that we need to flip. And when I start this one, I'm gonna come onto the fabric, backstitch, a half inch, needle in, foot up, and turn, and then continue my sleeve seam. So now we're done with one shoulder. And when you do the other one, you do not need to leave an opening. Just leave one opening in your jacket lining. Now we're done with one side of the lining. Now sew up the other side of the lining. Now it's time to sew the lining to the jacket. And the first step is going to be sewing the two necks together. So I have the neck of my lining layers and then I have my jacket laid down right side face up. Now don't forget to match those little pleat marks at center back. They should be one inch from your seam and then fold them over. And I'm gonna pin mine together. So that way when I'm sewing along the neck, I'll have my pleat in there. So we are just gonna work from one end all the way down to the other. And don't forget your seam allowance on this is a half inch. And your panels from front to back should line up. So your seam should be right on top of each other and make sure that they're open so that way it's not as bulky when you're sewing, especially if you're using a fake fur.
Okay, I ran into one little issue. My fur is so thick that I can't actually put the pleat in my lining. So if you're using a very thick fabric, your pleat might kind of disappear on you. But if you're using a thinner fabric, you should have the pleat at center back. I'm gonna sew up that neckline at a half inch and I'm a little nervous. We have four layers of fur here in some spots. We did it. We made it all the way around the collar. My lining is attached around the neck and I'm really happy with it. So now if your fabric is not as thick, I want you to under stitch that same row of stitches we just did. But if your fabric is real thick like this, it's probably not gonna be able to handle it. So thinner fabric, under stitch. Thicker fabric, don't under stitch it. Now we're gonna sew up center front and the bottom of center front, but don't go any further than that. Now that you've finished one side, do the same thing to the other side. Now what we need to do is sew up the rest of the bottom of the jacket. So we're gonna be sewing the lining layer to the fur layer. Now they are two different lengths, but I want you to open up the fold in the lining, match it to the edge of the fur, make sure you're lining up your seams, and we are going to sew this together at a half inch. Now, when you get over to the area where we meet in the front, it's gonna feel real awkward right here. You're only gonna be able to sew so far and just sew as far as you can. And I promise you, it's gonna work out when we flip it right side out. So remember, just sew as close as you can to that folded lining part. Just don't sew over it, otherwise it's gonna look funny on the outside. If you've got some pins there, just make sure you move them before you start sewing. When you get to your seams, make sure they are flat open. They're gonna be much smoother to sew over. And we get back here to this other corner where it's folded up that inch, just sew as far as you can and backstitch and cut. Okay, now we have that bottom sewn up at a half inch, but we're not done yet. Now what we need to do is make sure that this bottom edge stays folded up an inch and a half while we're wearing it. So that way our lining doesn't show and pop out. So what we need to do is mark up three inches on our jacket. So draw a chalk line three inches from the hem of your jacket on the self fabric while it's inside out. So this is the wrong side of my fabric. And now what we're gonna do is take the edge of the fabric and we are gonna make it match that three inch spot there. Go ahead and pin that down. So now you have some options. We need this to stay up so you can hand stitch this little edge here to the self fabric, just like you would see in a suit coat. You can also put some double fusible interfacing in here so that they stick together, or you can take it, flip it back and give it a blind hem. You need to do this across the entire bottom where there is lining. Now for my jacket, I'm just gonna grab a hand sewing needle real quick and just whip that edge together. Now it's time to sew up the opening of the sleeves. So I want you to keep your jacket inside out and we're going to take the lining layer and we're gonna lay it right on top of the fur layer. So both of your sleeves are laying on top of each other. Now what I want you to do is pick them up and we're going to match the seams. So the top shoulder seam, I want us to match it up and sew it. So your sleeves right now should kind of be making the circle here. So we're going to pin this seam together so we don't lose our spot. And now we're gonna take our underarm seam and we're going to match this up. Make sure your seam allowances are open. Okay, if you like, you can put a few more pins in here. But the really important part is that they're flat and they're on top of each other and you don't have anything twisted. So they're making this big circular shape here. And now when we go to sew, we just hold right sides together and we just work our way all the way around the opening of the sleeve. And just like that, it's sewn together. So now we're sewing right sides together, half inch, all the way around the opening of the armhole. Check it out, we did it. We sewed up the lining to the self at the sleeve opening. 
Now go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other opening. Just like the bottom, we need to get these sleeves to fold up and attach them permanently so that when we're wearing it, it stays folded up. So you can hand stitch it, you can fuse it, or blind hem it, just like the bottom. So choose your method and get those to fold up one inch on the arms. I am done hand sewing those sleeve openings and it is time to turn this right side out. The exciting stuff, right? So find that opening that you left in the lining. Just work your way flipping the entire coat right side out. Believe it or not, it's gonna work. It's gonna happen. Even though we sewed those arms in a circle, that's what we needed to do. Just be real careful you don't rip your lining. And if you've got a really thick, heavy fur like I do, just take your time working it out a little by a little. Ooh, it's getting there. Where's our arms? Here they are. <laughs> Fuzzies. Oh my gosh, look at this jacket. Look at that lining. Ah, oh, so cool, so cool. Now we need to find that opening. So this opening that we have here, we need to close it up. So you can hand stitch it, or you can add a little edge stitch with the layers together. Generally how suit coat linings are sewn up. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna add a little edge stitch, stitch those two together. So I'm just gonna add that little edge stitch, holding these layers together. Don't forget your edge stitch is an eighth of an inch or closer. Back stitch at the end and cut. And just like that, our lining is complete. Finally, right? We have one step left for finishing up this jacket and then we finally get to try it on. We need to add buttons and buttonholes. You're probably wondering, how am I gonna add buttonholes in this crazy thick fur? Well, I'm gonna show you. The buttonholes for the coat go on the right-hand side when you're wearing it, so it overlaps on the left-hand side. And if you pick up your front pattern piece, you're gonna notice all of these little like asterisk looking marks on it. That's where your buttons go. So you can use that as a guide for your buttonholes or you can place them however you like. Get creative with it. So I'm going to be using a water soluble interfacing. So that way the fur doesn't get caught in the sewing machine and we can just wash it away after. So I'm going to be using this on the front and on the back so that way it runs through the machine smoothly. So I'm gonna cut out a piece and pin it to the front of the coat on the right hand side. And then we will mark our buttonholes. One piece for the front and we'll cut one more piece for the back. I'm going to place one piece of water soluble under my coat and line it up with the edge and then I'm going to place the other piece on top. Now you're going to want to use some really big pins, probably some quilting pins. And we're gonna pin through all of the layers and try and get this nice and flat. You could also baste this on. And if you're not using a thick fake fur, well, you don't need all this water soluble interfacing. You can just put on your buttonholes like normal. Okay, now that I have this pinned down in place, it's time to mark our buttonholes. So I'm going to put the little dots that are on this pattern on the front of the jacket and then I'm gonna mark my buttonholes. It's always a great idea to punch out those little spots with your awl so that way you have a nice hole that you can mark through in your pattern. So line this up. Remember you have a collar up here. You can put a button on your collar if you want. I'm not going to be putting a button on my collar today. It's hard to see where the edge is with this thick fur. Just do the best you can and then weight it down. I'm going to be adding six buttons to my jacket today. So I'm gonna mark out six buttonholes. So now that I know where the buttons are gonna go, I need to mark some buttonholes around them. So I'm going to be using some very large buttons. So I need to position these right over the hole for the button. And we're going to be putting on horizontal buttonholes. My water soluble is just breaking apart on me like crazy. So I'm gonna draw out the center of the buttonhole so I know exactly where it's gonna go. And let's measure it. So my buttonholes need to be two inches. I have a really big button that I'm using here. Now that I have all six buttonholes marked out, it's time to start sewing them. I'm going to be creating manual buttonholes so I can make them real big. 
I also want to mention that I'm using a thicker thread than normal because this fabric is so thick. When I was trying it with all purpose thread, it just kept breaking. So I put a really thick needle in and I've got some thicker thread. And we did it. We got one buttonhole down and five more to go. Now I'm going to just keep moving on. So I'm going to move on to my next buttonhole here. I am adding another layer of this water soluble. It is kind of cracking and falling apart. I think it is past its expiration date here, but we're gonna get some more life out of it. We're gonna keep using it. Okay, four more to go. Now I have all of the buttonholes complete and it's time to remove the water soluble. I just ripped off all the water soluble and now we're left with beautiful buttonholes and we just need to open them. I'm gonna open up these buttonholes with my little snips. I think I need a razor blade. Tried opening it up with the snips, it just would not work so thick. So I'm going to be using a razor blade. You can hardly see these because the jacket's so furry, but there they are. Our buttons are complete. That was way harder than I even thought it could be. I even broke a needle. The eye of the needle snapped in half. How the heck did that happen? But it's done and we get to try it on and test it out. I love the fuzzy fluff on it. Kind of feel like a giant Elmo. I am loving my new winter fur coat. It is so warm and cozy. It is cold here in Chicago, but not for me because I'm in my new fur winter coat. Thanks so much for watching Sewing Anastasia today. If you have any questions about working with fake fur or making this Sewing Anastasia Dolman top fur coat, let me know. Leave it down below in the comments. And if you're in Chicago, come on into the design studio and take some sewing classes with me. And if you're not, that's okay too. I now have the Sewing Anastasia Sewing Academy.com for online classes. And there's a pattern of the month club with a virtual sewing circle. So we can all hang out together once a month virtually. So cool, right? And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to Sewing Anastasia. And if you're already a follower, thank you so much for watching today. These videos are for you guys. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all socials, so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And let me know what kind of patterns you'd like to see coming up this year. Leave it down below in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.